Welcome everyone uh, to this FROSMO webinar. Today we are introducing our brand new uh, recommendations 2.0 feature that we are very in excited about. Um, but before we get to the beef, let's do some housekeeping and introductions. Uh, my name is Katri Metsavo and I work as a senior documentation specialist here at FROSMO, meaning that I um, document and communicate about um, the FROSMO platform features on a daily basis. And here with me today is uh, Tina Krugfors, who is our solution consultant, meaning that she works really closely with the sales, supporting the, our sales team and has heaps of um, practical experience about the problems and issues our customers may have and the solutions that we have provided them. And this webinar will take approximately half an hour so that we will have some time for a little Q&A at the end. So in case you have any questions during the webinar, please uh, type them uh, to the questions box in your GoToWebinar um, control pane and we will address the questions at the end of the webinar. Today we will talk about not too much technical detail, so don't worry, um, but we will go through some common pain points uh, that our customers have had with their recommendations engines that they have been using. Um, we will also uh, discuss the benefits of using recommendations despite the pain points, why it's still worthwhile using recommendations after all and how they can really benefit you uh, if you do them right. And then to understand how the recommendations actually work and how you should be using them, we will shortly go through the recommendation data flow and um, Tina we here will then share some uh, real life examples of recommendation solutions that we have provided to our customers. And then we will introduce the recommendations 2.0 in more detail. Um, just to make sure we are all on the same page today, uh, when we talk about recommendations today, we are talking about um, content that is typically created from product data. Um, that's not always the case. It can be other types of data, as we will see later. But mostly, mostly the people think about product recommendations. Um, recommendations are often based um, on an algorithm that predicts which items on the website are relevant to a specific user. Uh, of course, not always uh, recommendations are using algorithms. They can also be created uh, very simply based on, uh, for example, the best selling products on the site, in which case you don't need an algorithm. Um, but um, these uh, recommendations are obviously designed <coughs> to both increase revenue uh, from the site and they are actually very effective in that if done right and also to improve user experience of the site. And this may sound really fancy but basically recommendations are just a filtering system to filter out some content and personalize content for the visitors. So there are some um, pain points um, regarding the most common recommendation engines. Um, and the most important one, I think, is that most recommendation solutions are black, black boxes, meaning that um, you have no visibility to the algorithms they use, and you don't have really any possibility to tweak those algorithms to your needs. Um, why is it so important to be able to modify the algorithms? Well, as, as um, the owners of the shop is basically the ones who know their uh, customers, not mm -hmm. the ones creating the recommendations. So I think the recommendation should always be 
customizable for the specific like persons who are visiting the site, the certain visitors. So traveling recommendations are not the same as media or or e-commerce. Mm. So one size doesn't fit all. Yeah, in this exactly. Case. Um, another com- really common problem that is not only present with recommendations, but every kind of basically stuff that you do on your website are the data silos, um, which means that data is difficult to access. And for example, with the recommendation engines, you can't use the data you get from them. Uh, you can't use it in other systems. And many recommendation engines are also right, like really specialized, so they can't read data from different sources and different types. Um, in your everyday work, you probably see this pain point a lot. What is like the most annoying thing it causes? Well, what uh, what I hear from customers, it's um, it's actually the fact that the data is also like spread to multiple different places. Mm -hmm. So when you are looking at the performance of the site from one place and the recommendations from another, you actually really fast lose the big picture. So if you want to see how the recommendations as such are like making the performance better, it's actually pretty difficult because you need to combine data from multiple different places. Yeah, so reporting is really difficult. Um, and whereas that's a, that's a problem that you may have if you have lots of data, you may all, also suffer from the cold start problem, which means that it's really hard to personalize recommendations <laughs> or basically anything if you don't have any data. You don't know what um, you can uh, base those recommendations on. But actually we have a solution to that and we'll be talking about it a little bit later in the webinar. Uh, most recommendation engines also have severe presentation restrictions and by that I mean that you have limitations on how much you can modify the look and feel of the recommendation and how you can apply your own branding to it. And that's also something that I think it's really important that you're able to do to use recommendations effectively. Uh, One major pain point um, is lack of innovation. Um, Sometimes the algorithms um, fail to add value to to your website. Uh, For example, if a visitor has just bought the second Harry Potter book and they are shown a recommendation for the third Harry Potter book, um, then it's not very clever or innovative in the sense that they would have probably bought the third book anyway and it doesn't encourage like product discovery uh, for the visitors. Um, And often you actually see irrelevant recommendations. Uh, Can you explain what that means? Well, I could start with this um, example that I normally tell tell customers that that you can have these recommendations where where you have like persons who bought this also bought this mm. and and then someone bought a chainsaw when they bought a trampoline so it doesn't mean that if someone else did it that it's actually something that you are interested in and um, the second one uh, is uh, if you have this kind of like luxury product lines and you're looking at the luxury product it doesn't make any sense to show like normal products or like cheaper products because normally like the series go together, right? And then just um, in in whatsoever case, like irrelevant recommendations, like you already bought a scarf that is blue, why would you buy a yellow one immediately after that? So. Yeah. Even though I can yeah. think of some reasons, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah but like ev- everyone knows this when they browse on the sites, you know, that there's recommendations that they're like, oh, why is this still showing up? I already bought it. Yeah. And stuff like this. So. Or if you buy a big TV, you don't want to buy another big TV. Yeah, next exactly. Day, exactly. Um, so those are the pain points. But on the other hand, to flip the coin, there are so many uh, benefits to doing recommendations that. Um, everybody's still doing them and if they are not they should consider doing them. Um, The most important and maybe the most obvious one is 
that they are really effective in creating revenue when they are done right. Just to increase the overall sales, um, Amazon is a classic example. A couple of years ago, over a third of their revenue from their uh, websites was created through recommendations. And when you think about what a, what a giant Amazon is, that's like a huge amount of money. Yeah. But I mean, they are always used as an example of, of doing recommendations, right? Because they really do it really well. Yeah. Um, but it's also can be used for more targeted things like uh, cross-selling and upselling um, quite effectively, which of course creates a higher average order value. Um, but one thing that um, people don't often think about is that recommendations can actually create cost savings as well, because if you have a good recommendation engine, um, recommendations are done almost automatically, which reduces manual work, yeah. and you can then use those resources to something more important, basically. Um, another major benefit of recommendations is the customer satisfaction. Um, they have been proved to improve customer ex uh, engagement and even um, cause losses to companies that are not um, able to do them right. Um, for example, um, the Facebook social feed, even though it's often criticized of how it works, it's actually really, really effective in keeping people on the site and keeping them scrolling. Uh, they have already based it on algorithms in 2006. And uh, uh, another example, Twitter uh, has not managed to do it so well. Um, they only introduced uh, algorithm-based um, social feed in 2016, and it was actually so bad that nowadays they are bringing back uh, the chronological feed that's so that the users can decide which one they want to use because people were so unhappy with the algorithm-based feed. And um, that actually caused them some financial losses as well. Um, so you really have to do it right and get it right to um, improve your customers' engagement. Um, recommendations, of course, also enable you to personalize your website content for all visitors, um, including visitors that you don't know, uh, who have not signed in, and even visitors who have, for example, opted out from uh, the profiling features on your site. And one important thing to remember is that recommendations really effectively in, can encourage product or content discovery. Um, again, Amazon is a good example here. Um, it really brings you as a, as a consumer some pleasure when you notice that the site recommends something that you didn't think of buying but that really suits you and that you're really interested in. That's like really good uh, customer service, um, I think. But to get a little more technical, to know how to create effective recommendations, it's good to understand how recommendations actually work and how the data flows in there. There are three main components to the recommendation data flow. And this is now sort of Frosmo-centric uh, because this is the way <laughs> it's done with the Frosmo platform. Uh, first of all, you have your product feed, uh, which is coming from, for example, your product information uh, management system or wherever you happen to keep your product data or get it from. Um, the product feed is fed to, in this case, the Frosmo data pipeline, which is actually just a um, fancy name for the mechanism we use to transfer data from one place to another. It get, then goes to this um, washing machine looking thingy uh, containing uh, the machine learning algorithms that we can use um, in the Frosmo back end. I will go th through the most important types of uh, algorithms in just a minute. And then obviously the last component is the presentation layer, 
which is the front end of the website or app uh, where the visitors actually see the recommendations. Mm, the first part, the data sources, um, is something that is really important because it forms the basis of the whole um, recommendation system. Um, and to use recommendations effectively, you really have to be able to combine data from different sources. Um, but this is often really challenging. Um, for example, there can be a lag between, between the different systems that provide the data, and that can mean that um, up-to-date information about product prices or avail availability is it's not there or it's not in sync and that can cause problems. Then there are other system restrictions as well. When you have different systems that um, read data in different formats, like your um, customer relationship management system, your ERP, your product information management, your e-commerce platform, your content management system, and so forth, um, it can really be uh, difficult to be able to use data from all of these. And then again, you have the risk of creating data silos. Um, but Frosmo is actually um, very proud of the fact that we can really easily combine <coughs> and use data from different types of systems. Um, then a few words about the algorithms that you can use to create recommendations. Um, the two main types are um, collaborative filtering algorithms and content-based uh, filtering algorithms. And uh, collaborative filtering of content means that um, the recommendation is based on similar ratings of a specific product or ratings um, given by similar visitors as yourself. So it's not based on the product data only, it's based on what other people have done on the site. Uh, whereas content-based filtering is only based on the product attributes. Um, as it's simplest, um, if you bought a product, like we discussed, um, a scar blue scarf, yeah. you may be recommended similar products that are other scarves, other blue items, other items in the same uh, price range or from the same brand or so forth. So, of course, it can be, uh, you can't really create complicated recommendations this way, but it can really be used in a very simple way as well. Um, for the best results, it's often good to have a hybrid model that uh, combines the best parts of these methods. For example, when a visitor on your site views a, a product page, you can use um, content-based filtering to sort of narrow down uh, the list of products based on the one they are viewing. And then you can use content-based filtering to sort of see what other users have done and um, to sort of find the best uh, options to recommend to this specific visitor. <clears throat> now Tina is uh, hopefully kind enough to share some uh, practical examples of the solutions we have done with yeah. recommendations. We hope that um, these are something a little out of the box, so they may give you some new ideas on how you can use recommendations yeah. on your site. Uh, so for the first example, uh, I chose uh, to show how the recommendations can be used for, um, for example, media or somewhere where the product is not like a physical product mm -hmm. or where it doesn't have, for example, a price. So in, in media, we um, normally do it in a way because in media uh, you actually get the revenue out of the page views so when you have the advertisement on the pages the more pages people view the more uh, revenue you get yeah. so it's in the media company's interest to actually have you read many articles so uh, what we are doing with these uh, recommendations we are actually adding this um, 
infinite scroll um, systems with multiple different uh, articles in it. And then again, we can use whatever algorithms that, that uh, you were talking about earlier to actually generate these. Um, this is actually the infinite scroll is something that you often see in uh, social media feeds. Uh, is it now being used more in other types of sites as well? Yeah, yeah, you actually see this um, in pretty many places. Like when you're, let's say you're viewing the scarves mm -hmm. and, um, and you're looking at the category page. Normally nowadays you already have on the category page, you have with this lazy loading, you have uh, the infinite scroll coming, so you have products coming there. So yeah. when you're uh, using, for example, a filter, the first products you're going to see are the ones matching the filter best. And then the additional ones that comes, they are coming like from matches, but not so good matches as the ones on the top. Yeah, this is a little bit like our um, next example, which is basically a whole front end or the whole product catalog yeah. done with recommendations. Yeah. So in this one, I wanted to actually show you what uh, also Katri was saying in the in the beginning that um, that you should see the recommendation as a product listing with specific filters. Mm -hmm. So. In this case, I want to show like a page which is totally built with a recommendation. So, uh, in we have already built this to a few customers, and the thing is that we're getting data from multiple different places and gathering all of them on this one page. Then we can use the machine learning algorithms to do some uh, scraping, or uh, choosing which ones to recommend in what places, and then we actually can add the filters. So as you see here on top, there's possibility to, to choose different filters to additionally put on the algorithms. So in this way, if you think about it, you can actually personalize the site to ev each and every visitor that is in there. So you can both personalize based on, on data, and then you can give the um, visitors the possible possibility to customize yes. it by themselves, so that's really a good combination. Um, I know we've actually done solutions like this, and I think they're really cool from the real life examples. What I've seen is this something other recommendation in engine providers can do? Well, depends a bit on their setups. But as actually presented as uh, one of the pains that I normally see with customers and what they have is the fact that they cannot combine the data from multiple different places. So um, setups like this can be difficult yeah. because uh, imagine, um, imagine when you have the, the listing of the products and you have the product information with the pictures and, for example, price coming from one place. Mm -hmm. And then you actually have the stock information in another feed. So if you're not able to combine this, it's uh, pretty relevant to do this kind of like whole page product listings. Yeah, it's kind of risky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, then we have one more um, example of a shopping funnel. This is actually something you often do that you get your uh, recommendations on your um, shopping bag or your shopping cart. But um, why did you want to show this example? I think this is something that people can like uh, in general like relate to the most because everyone knows when you go to the counter in the brick and mortar shop that uh, you have the chocolate bars there, the chewing gums or the small things that cost mm. just a few euros and you really easily just pick something with you from there. So there's two use cases on this, uh, using the recommendation in the shopping funnel, which is this one. So you can just actually raise your average order value uh, with this kind of additional product. But then again, uh, what I also say, it's, it's a really good way of uh, providing customer service to the customers. Mm -hmm. So when you're buying a TV or a printer uh, from a store, they ask you, do you have the right cables to it? Uh, or would you like one? We have them here. And it's a bit more difficult in e-commerce stores. So if they have missed, if the customer in the store have bought a TV and they have missed the fact that they need to buy the HDMI cable, mm -hmm. we actually still have a possibility to make sure here that are you sure you have these th things and pieces you need to actually use this product? Yeah. Do you have a good example of how, how the, the average order value can be increased? Well, I, I have to say, since, since we have the socks here, um, we had a customer 
to whom we made um, this kind of recommendation to the shopping funnel asking uh, if you have enough black socks mm -hmm. or if you need more black socks. And uh, we actually lifted the amount of sold black socks times three. So, <laughs> yeah. so you don't even have to personalize yeah, always exactly. if, if you just yeah. know what you're recommending. Yeah, yeah thanks. That, that was very illuminating. <laughs> um, well, recommendations 2.0, <laughs> we still have some time to talk about it. And this is actually a new add-on feature that um, is currently being developed and will be uh, available very soon. And uh, we, we're very excited about this um, new way of creating recommendations because it's very effective and really addresses the pain points that many recommendation engines have and that we went through um, in the beginning. Um, but so, to sort of understand um, how it works, um, Frosmo is um, specialized in managing and enhancing the entire digital experience. And it's good to understand that uh, recommendations are not just a separate feature, but actually they touch upon all the major aspects of digital experience. Um, for example, the business requirements, which is a very important aspect, obviously, um, is something that can be improved or met uh, with recommendations quite easily, as they are so effective in increasing the revenue uh, from the site and meeting the uh, other business goals. And then when you think about uh, customer, consumer expectations, recommendations are a really effective way of um, improving the user experience and the engagement as well, as we have seen. And even for front-end development, we just saw that you can basically create the whole front-end of your website just with recommendations. So it's really important to sort of understand how how much you can do with this with this single feature um, what we are going to provide um, is dynamic and personalized recommendations which is uh, of the ultimate importance if you don't have them in real time and if they you don't have them for the right uh, visitor segments they are not going to be effective um, the most important thing with recommendations 2.0 is that you are in control, which means, like you said, that you can tweak um, and modify the algorithms. Why is this so important? Yeah, well, again, it's, it's um, like maybe all, already like everyone has in at this part, they are thinking that, yeah, you should have recommendations, but really to just like line it out, it's actually the fact that people take it as a norm mm -hmm. to have the recommendations. So when you're looking at the product, if you don't have the right size or the right color that you like, what the first thing you do is to scroll down to just yeah. see if there is a recommendation of something similar. And these kind of things of something similar products, they are not something that we even as Frosmo can like just say that, yeah, these are the products. You you need to be able to give the like customer, the company who's selling the products, mm -hmm. the possibility to, to change what they are showing there. Yeah, again, it's like you can create recommendations that support your business exactly. and in your market. Yeah. And, and, and you're the expert on yeah. that, obviously. Frosmo platform is also really good um, for continuous testing. You can always make sure that you are using, you are showing the best performing recommendations. And as we discussed, you can easily personalize the recommendations so that they are actually relevant to the users um, or the visitors who see them. And this way to minimize um, any irrelevant recommendations, which are basically just annoying for, yeah. for most people. Uh, one important thing is that um, you can use the Frosmo platform to catch basically any visitor actions on the site and um, 
and those events that the visitors are triggering on the site, the actions they take can be used as, um, as triggers to show specific recommendations for them. For example, you can only choose to show re a recommendation when the visitor has gone through uh, enough steps in the shopping funnel. Um, so that again makes them uh, more effective. Um, then you can use the recommendations to avoid the cold start problem. You had a really good example on this, how you can create recommendations even without data. Yeah, so, so one, one way of doing this is, for example, using some kind of um, like NLP algorithms, which actually read through the content that we have there and does matching of the products uh, mm -hmm. with the basis of that. So this means that when you have a new shop and you don't have um, data from which are the most sold or most used products, you can actually just have the recommendations regarding the specific products that are similar. Mm -hmm. and, and as you were saying earlier, this is for also saving the resources. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, it was the next point. So, so that's, that's also the thing. Like what, what uh, customers need to do now is they need to pinpoint this product goes together with this product. Mm -hmm. But by using uh, NLP, which is natural language processing, you can so, have it yeah. automatically read the products and combine them, which go together. Okay. That is very, like, seems very clever way to do it. Yeah. Um, then again, um, the data issues that we were talking about. Um, with recommendations 2.0, you have basically everything in the same place um, and you can use the data from your different systems quite easily. Is there anything you'd like to say or add to um, this point? Yeah, well, just, just to again point out how important it is to be able to combine also the data. So people are putting, and companies are putting a lot of money to buy the different systems, uh, to have the information combined from what you buy in the real stores, what you buy in the e-commerce stores, and of course, like, what do you do if you don't have all this data usable? Mm -hmm. um, nothing. So you need to be able to combine them. Yeah, That's it doesn't make it. sense to yeah. collect data if you're not able exactly. to um, exactly. use it. Um, and finally, it's really important also to implement your own branding because obviously you want your recommendations to have the same look and feel as the rest of your website. Yeah. You don't want them to stand out as yeah. something separate from the other content. The more seamlessly they fit into the, the other content, the better and um, yeah, the better the user experience. Um, I hope this uh, sort of tickled your fancy a little bit regarding of uh, what we will provide <coughs> with recommendations. Um, we actually have the um, recommendations 2.0 generally available in um, on the 3rd of December, so just a little over a month. And that is the first version of the feature, so it will have a slightly limited functionality still. Um, but it will have some developers material available and um, like robust technical documentation to accompany it. And actually the beta version is already available. So if you're interested in participating in testing it, please contact our sales because we will be very happy to discuss uh, testing the beta version with us. That way you also have the opportunity to put your input in uh, in developing the feature. Yeah, and be, be, f be first in the market using these algorithms. I think yeah. that's also like quite an advantage. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You will be ahead of the pack, yeah. so to say. Um, so in case you're interested, contact our sales to, through sales uh, at frostmo.com or if you're already working with us, then contact your own sales manager. Um, now we have some time for questions, if you have any. Um, let's see. Uh, no questions yet. In case you have something to ask at this point, you can type it in the questions box. 
Um, you can, of course, always send your uh, questions to us afterwards, and we'll be happy to um, answer you personally if it's something specific to your business that you would like to ask. It seems that there are no questions at this point. There, or is there? Oh, yeah, there is one. Is there a UI um, in recommendation engine to help us customize the experience or is everything done via code? Um, in the first version, we, we have a UI, but it's very limited. So you definitely want to, or you need to have some coding skills to uh, use it. Um, the UI will be obviously developed further and we will have a full UI available a bit later. But in the meanwhile, if you're interested in, in, in the recommendation engine, but you are not into coding, we are definitely able to help you with um, with the practical part. Yeah. I actually, that, actually yeah. I saw the the first version of the of the UI for the recommendations. So I have to say that it's going to be uh, quite intuitive. Also, uh, yeah. when it comes to using the different machine learning algorithms, so you can actually even learn how the different algorithms work because you're you're going to have like possibility to choose mm. what, for example, smoothing windows you're using for the the um, trending products. Yeah. So that's yeah. also going to be a bit interesting to learn. Yeah, and when we release uh, the first version of recommendations 2.0, the, the UI that we have is going to be um, incorporated in the Frosmo control panel, which is the UI you use for other Frosmo functionality as well. So it will be there. Um, to remind you, this is an add-on feature, so it's not um, for the testing phase, it's good to contact our sales and discuss uh, what we can do for you. But um, when it's generally available, it will not be uh, included in every Frosmo plan. So if you want to get it again, you will go through our sales. Um, hopefully that answered your question. Let's see if we have anything else. Another question. To get rid of this. <laughs> I can't use this friendly. Okay. So monitoring the performance of the records UI or ability to read the data from some other tool environment. Okay. Um, I actually just yeah. did a did a um questionnaire and that actually with the with the makers of the recommendations and uh, it's actually possible to even push this information uh, to, um, to 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 Google Analytics <laughs> I almost had like a break there in my thoughts yes so we can do it so that you can see all the data from the Frosmo control panel if that's what you want uh, but there's a possibility to push this data to Google Analytics yeah okay and so you can monitor the performance yeah. of the recommendations through the Frosmo control panel. Yeah. It's visible there yes. in, a, in, a, like, um, in a sort of statistical format. Yes. Uh, you can push it to, to your GA if you like, um, and ability to read the data from some other tool. I think this, this meant that you yeah. can sort of push it to some other tool. Yeah, that's tool how and, I yeah, yeah. understand it. Yeah, yeah I guess. That's, if, if we didn't get your question, please, <laughs> please <laughs> retype. Um, hopefully we answered your questions and you found this um, information interesting. Um, hope to see you next time and thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Tina, for you. sharing your experiences. Thanks for having me. And um, see you next time. Bye-bye.